about an entirely new technology of weaponry and a new style of warfare, trench warfare, both sides being deeply entrenched due to new weapons like heavy machine guns. As the front line virtually went unchanged, these trenches became more and more heavily fortified with deeper trench lines and more barbed wire. As time went on with these deeply entrenched lines, the need for new technology of this new style of warfare became obvious. What was needed was a bulletproof vehicle that could carry soldiers through enemy entrenched barbed wire lines armed with weapons that could destroy enemies once they're past enemy lines also to allow the rest of the troops through. And that really ultimately led to the tank technology. Early on in the war, a lot of experimental tanks came through, mostly built on tractor chassis. But the first real example was the British Mark I. November 20th, 1917, the first successful tank offensive penetrated enemy lines, but ultimately failed as the infantry didn't follow through. Germany ultimately took back the land that was gained by the British Mark tanks. A couple problems they had with these early British tanks is they only went four miles per hour and ultimately they produced 400 of these Mark tanks. They came up with a couple versions, the Mark II and the Mark III, but meanwhile British ally France was also working on a version of the tank. With a few failures they finally came up with the Renault FT light tank, otherwise called the FT-17, invented in 1917. Produced by the Renault Auto Company, it was believed that Louis Renault began designing the FT-17 as early as December of 1915. Louis Renault believed there weren't reasonable engines to power the tank size that most were designing that only a light tank for that time would have the right power and weight ratio, with the Mark versions weighing up to 28 tons. So he limited the FT to under 7 tons and ensured that it was run by only two men. Louis Renault, along with Raoul Ernst Metzer, who was a Renault auto designer, who also helped set up the FT's mass production. Many historians refer to the Renault FT-17 as the first modern tank ever made, as most tanks to this day still follow this design. This French light tank was the first with a rotating turret armed with either a Pateau SA-1918 37mm gun, which was a French single-shot breech-loaded cannon that fired at a rate of 15 rounds per minute, or the 8mm Hotchkiss machine gun fired at a rate of 450 to 600 rounds per minute, and that remained the French Army's heavy machine gun until 1940. The FT's tanks were automatically under tension to keep from derailing with a rounded tail end to allow for trench crossings. The Renault was powered with a four-cylinder 4.5-liter thermo siphon water-cooled engine giving off 39 horsepower. This engine was designed to run regardless of the angle to navigate steep slopes and trenches without losing power. It was driven with a sliding gear four-speed forward as well as one reverse gear, two clutches for each track, ran with a 95 liter gas tank allowing it to run for up to eight hours. Its armor was eight to 22 millimeters thick depending on where on the tank you're talking about. The French Army originally ordered 7,800 of these Renault FT-17 tanks. Louise Renault sold these tanks to the French Army at cost for patriotic reasons. When U.S. entered World War I in April of 1917, they had no tanks at all. Of course, the Renault FT-17 was by far the best tank ever made at the time, and they ordered 4,400 of these from Renault, which he did intend to profit from. They referred to it as the U.S. M1917. Slow production of the FT-17 led to no deliveries of the M1917 until after the war. However, 144 of these tanks were loaned to the U.S. during the war. These FT tanks completely changed the war from being a deadlock with virtually no change in front lines to a very changing moving battlefront by the middle of 1918. Ultimately, the French Army's plan was to attack with swarms of FT tanks, which completely shattered Central Powers' lines, ending the war, and became by far the best tank of the war, eventually taking on the name of the Victory Tank. Thousands of FT tanks were produced following the war, 
But by World War II, during the invasion of France, the French army believed it would be another trench war and went to meet the Germans, but quickly became overrun, ultimately losing several FTs to the Germans and realizing it was outdated technology. Over time, 28 different countries use the Renault FT-17, and most modern tanks today take designs from the FT, making it not the first tank, but the first modern battle-worthy tank ever made. And as evil always shows its ugly head, it's weapons like the FT-17 that allow us to defeat it. Thank you for watching this episode of the History of Weapons. So